okay now. Hi, welcome to the GSALS Be Inspired to Excel program. This is our number five in the series, and I am uh, pleased to announce that we have Rosie and Lucy Harris here from the world of netball. Rosie graduated from Loughborough University after leaving GSAL in 2016. She played for Loughborough Lightning and reached the grand final twice, and she's also been in the final and winning the Fast Fives. We have Lucy Harris, who left GSAL in 2014. She graduated from Liverpool University and played for Wasps, where she won two grand finals. Welcome, girls. Hello. Hello. <laughs> right, well, we've got 10 questions for you today, and then we finish with 10 fast-fire questions where you're only allowed to give one answer to, so good luck with that. And my first question for you today, by the way, you're looking very well. My first <laughs> question today is, going back to your time at school, what are your first sporting memories? Um, okay, so for me, I have to say my first sporting memory is probably the Rose Court and Ford House sports days on the field. Um, and I think I just vividly remember being quite mortified that my mum took part in the parents' race. <laughs> um, but also, yeah, just, just that, that feeling of, of coming away with lots of medals and, and stickers. Um, they're my first um, sporting memories, I have to say. Um, I think... Yeah, probably saying those green gym knickers. Do you remember oh, those? Yeah. Awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we did like little exercise classes in like the wooden floored rose court assembly room. And then we were, like, ended up in G Cell, which has the most insane facilities. And um and yeah, that's probably the like the kind of the benchmark where we were like mm. originated all of our passion for sport and just yeah, probably back then. Right. Well, I'm not gonna talk about the green knickers, but <laughs> I want to know, before Mrs Nash asks you her first question, did your mum win the parent race? Oh, she's so, I hope so. She's so competitive. <laughs> she's like one of those really secretly competitive people. Like she pretends it's my dad, but it's actually her. I think she so she definitely, I reckon she would have won. Yeah, I, yeah, I back mum, I think she would have won. <laughs> I think she probably won. I think she won. <laughs> Let's go with that. <laughs> well, I'd like to say I think your mum probably won as well. Yeah, <laughs> what I was going to say, and I do remember the green knickers back at Leeds Girls, so yes, yeah, <laughs> traumatised by those two. Yeah. Uh, my question is, how did you first get into netball, and when did you realise that you could have potential in this profession? Um, so I definitely first got involved in netball at school. Um, I didn't think, I, well, I wasn't any good, really, <laughs> when I first got involved. I was more swaying towards hockey initially. Um, and, yeah, so I, I just... I think I picked it up at school. I think I was in the B team or the, the C team to begin with and then like slowly started getting better. I worked really hard um, at all the practices, stayed after school and, and practiced. And then um, I think it was uh, Mrs Hinton who actually saw that there was a bit of potential there and uh, boosted me up into the A team. And then through that, I went into satellite and county and, and just like worked my way up that way. But really gradually, I really wasn't a natural at all. Um, and then I'd say... Um, Mrs. Johnson obviously did an amazing job at like trying to um, spur us on as well. Three. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then um, I'd say Miss Kirk as well. Um, I have a very vivid memory of when Miss Kirk said, um, I don't know who she was talking to, but she said, oh, Rosie's going to play for England. And I think in a year, a year down the line, I went in and played for England. So having like sort of moments like that and people believing in you, um, that almost helped me believe in myself that I could have made it. But it wasn't an initial natural thing or that I was naturally gifted at all? I think for me it was, um, we actually both started diving, so we know Yona like quite well because we started mm. doing that um, and that gave us quite a lot of that kind of like athletic background um, and then for me it was, I genuinely am just like chronically competitive, mm. it's, it's a disease or something because <laughs> I went into um, my netball sessions at school and it's like school netball and I was getting really, really wound up that this, these two girls, Hattie Grant and Anissa Kabakamara, <laughs> were like ahead of me and they were, kept, they, they were in satellite and I was like, hell, I should be in satellite, <laughs> I need to be there. So then I got there and then when I got there, there were some girls that were in county and I was like, Oh, I'm better than them, I need to be there. And it's basically just been a massive accident and I've ended up in the Super League. <laughs> but it's just like snowballed from just being really competitive and annoyed. <laughs> I'm just jealous. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, massive yeah, massive accidents happen yeah. like that, don't they, when you're really good? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of what where, that's where I got to where I was essentially. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then it's just really lucky that we've kind of 
hit netball at the time where it's kind of transitioning into that more semi-professional professional um kind of area and because i think a few years before it just wouldn't have been possible but now we are getting paid a wage we've got contracts and um, got like a players association so all those things are starting to build and netball starting to build as a sport and as a profession as well so that's really good <laughs> Good stuff. And, and then what was your time like before lockdown? What was a typical day like for you? Um, so before lockdown, uh, so it's a bit of a long story, but um, I took a year out of netball last year um, and focused on triathlon. So a lot of my training has been based around triathlon. So I'd sort of wake up um, when I was working with the company before furlough leave. I'd wake up in the morning, like a Monday morning at about five in the morning, do a training session, do a full day of work and then get back and do some more triathlon training. Um, just before lockdown, I, uh, I did a triathlon in Spain. So all of my time up until that was geared purely towards triathlon training. So um, a typical day would, would be, like I said, trying, trying to fit in two training sessions a day and, and also trying to fit a full day of work in as well. So um, that's what a typical day would look like for me. Um, and yeah, so just quite busy, not much, not much chill, chill time. Um, so it's been a strange adjustment to make to suddenly yeah. go from doing ridiculous amounts to doing sort of nothing because I've been put on further leave at the moment. So um, I'm just still concentrating on my training and I suppose it's, it's good because it's given me more time to focus on training and then have a bit more time to recover throughout the day as well. So um, strange adjustment, but um, you just got to deal with what, what comes your way, I suppose. I think you've probably got that structure, the kind of two training sessions a day and that you're working around mm, that from yeah, netball because yeah. that's what mine is like when I'm contracted. So yeah, in general, it kind of be like a morning session, an evening session. But if I've got like a couple of evening sessions, like a strength and then a, a netball on court, then I'll, I'll just kind of leave the morning and just try and relax. <laughs> um, mm. But yeah, I think like netball is just one of those sports that obviously, um, given it's semi-professional at the moment and some girls aren't really getting paid very much, they've got to have the flexibility for you to go off and earn a living or be a mum or, mm. or whatever um, and then come in and train kind of and be able to fit your training around that. So in that sense, netball is really flexible and I think we've learned to be very flexible because of that. Mm. Um, because everyone's doing everything at any one time in a team of 15. So you've got to make sure that you're kind of all on the same page with that. So yeah, I think that's probably two sessions a day, mm. um, maybe one rest day if, if stuff's quite tough. But even on the rest day, I'd be doing yoga or walking or mm. something. That's the rest. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sounds, um, like, and sounds yeah. like a good rest. Yeah, yeah. Active, active rest we call it. Yeah. Mm. So in, yeah, go on, sorry. Sammy, go on. <laughs> No I think okay, so in lockdown, it's top tips um, for our students who are sort of starting to train um, and trying to maintain a tro uh, training program coming out of lockdown. Mm. It's tough. Yeah, well, it is. It is really tough, and and definitely motivation comes in waves for sure. Like some days you wake up and you feel like you can do everything, balance all balance all your different commitments, and then other days you wake up and you don't really feel like doing much, but. The you always say to me, get up, when the motivation train comes, get on it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Make the most of the motivation train, <laughs> yeah. for sure. But I mean, I have to say to like keep a fairly consistent level of training and motivation. I try and ha um, create a morning routine and just get in, and you do the same thing. Yeah. And I think that comes from our dad as well. He's very rigid on his morning routine. Mm. Um, but it seriously does help me have a reason to get up, get out of bed and get moving. And then sort of just make sure that I try and train at similar times every day as well so for example on Tuesday I always leave my training till the evening and then other days I tend to like say Wednesday I normally do a session at 11 o'clock in the morning and for some reason it just helps me think that oh this is the time I train rather than sort of waking up like not really knowing when I'm going to train and, and things like that so yeah I'd say morning routine and having set times when you train I think they're, they're my two um, ways I've tried to manage and deal with lockdown yeah i'm probably the same we, uh, my boyfriend and i've created a whiteboard of like our days um so we've got like monday tuesday all the way through and then what targets we have to hit that day so if it's like just one snc session and a yoga then that's fine or if it's like a, a run and um score or whatever so and it's really satisfying ticking off those days as well mm -hmm. um quite demoralizing when you have to rub it all off on Monday though. <laughs> <laughs> Start again. Yeah. But then I think also one of the issues I've found in lockdown is that you go from having this kind of 
quite established routine and also having like all these players breathing down your neck like my coach is always talking about her size tens <laughs> and my bum basically <laughs> <laughs> um so i think it's really important to kind of um you know get get that motivation get that routine back so like rosie says with that morning routine but then also in all that down like dead time which we, we all have a lot more of these days make sure that it's not filled with kind of negative stuff so um, I think people are spending a lot more time on social media. So making sure that you fill your social media with um, inspirational figures. So especially for girls wanting to be netballers, following all the Aussie netballers and the Kiwis who are actually their, their leagues restarting soon. Um, I follow Lindsay Vaughn, who's amazing. Katie Taylor. Mm. Like having all those kind of inspirational role models on your social media rather than people, maybe like supermodels who aren't going to make you feel great about yourself. Mm. <laughs> um, having those kinds of people on, on like seeing that content all the time is much more motivating than, than the other stuff. No, definitely, yeah. It's like the radiators and the drains. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like the radiators. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's, but it's great. Thank it's you. great to see you two on television as well, though, with, with matches and all that. That's quite. As you say it's quite <laughs> strange for us to see you. That's well, absolutely amazing. So you should consider yourselves as inspirational leaders as well for, for, for people and and for definitely for our kids. But you know, you, you're touching on kind of like the mental health side of things there as well. Um, and, and and of course, it's a massive issue in society at the moment. Uh, Participation in physical activity is obviously recognised as, you know, a help towards, uh, you know, our well-being. Uh, how would you see schools developing this uh, and the benefits to students as far as well-being is concerned? Um, so, sorry, so, so just to stay staying active, which can help your well-being. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so we, we know that ourselves in society, we know that helping children to stay active helps with their well-being. What advice would you give to our students as far as their well-being is concerned and, and how to stay active? Yeah, so um, I do a few things to keep on top of my well-being um, in general. So I, I take, do quite a lot of um, meditation. So even if it's just like five, ten minutes a day, it just helps me like just get a bit calm. And that can be through yoga. It can be through, I use an app called the Calm app. Um, and that's literally just like part of my morning routine, like I said, and every morning I wake up and do five, 10 minutes of meditation. It just sort of helps me just like calm my nerves, just relax if I'm sort of stressed about what's, what's to come. And I think there's a lot of uncertainty at the moment. So it is that um, just level of just like calm and just like being, being like in the moment um, is what that helps me with. Um, and then in terms of staying active, I use exercise and I always have used exercise as, as a release. So if I've ever had a stressful day at work, I would much rather go out and go for a quick jog or walk or even it, it, it like can just be to go and play tennis or, or just getting some headspace. That really helps me deal with everyday life. And I think having that as a motivation rather than it doesn't necessarily have to always be about performing and always be about hitting personal best it can just be that just getting out and and just having a breath and a moment for yourself as well um because it is sort of unprecedented times at the moment and i think there's no right or wrong way of doing it no one's ever done lockdown before so i think there's just you have to have that level of like just wait and 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 just be kind to yourself in a way that's it's not always about hitting pbs and it's not always about um what's to come it can literally just be about just having a bit of fun with your friends as well yeah. um yeah i think the athletes as well have a tendency to be a little bit obsessive mm. um i know i definitely do yeah, yeah um so i think it's also just really important to have like other things of outside of your sport that you're interested in and that you kind of again that you can use that as a release from your sport as well because although activity is definitely a release from like work work can also be that release from um like performance sport if that's the route that people wanted to go down and um, so i definitely say and i think gsl does a really good job of this is keeping like a lot of options open and, and opening avenues for different interests as well as sport um so having a kind of wide variety of stuff that you you can go to um whenever you're feeling a little bit stressed about one thing or the other i think is always useful yeah definitely <laughs> Um, I was going to ask, so touching on that, really, um, you both come through, um, when you were talking about the obsession and what have you, both come through GSAL, and uh, I just wonder whether there's been any sibling rivalry between you as the years have gone on that have sort of spurred you on to, uh, to sort of achieve <laughs> more highly? What do you um, think? <laughs> 
I mean, there's there's always a level of sibling rivalry, I think. Yeah. Um, and I think the fact that we sort of, I mean, luckily at school, we didn't play the same position because no, <laughs> it could have been a lot worse. Yeah. Um, luckily at school, Lucy, you were more of a goal attack shooter yeah, when you and I, I was more, I was always centre court and more of a defensive player. So I think in, in that retrospect, it wasn't a direct competition or comparison, mm. but there was always like, I always wanted to live up to the, live up to what Lucy was doing within netball and and she was always chomping at my heels <laughs> so I'm always like <laughs> yeah, yeah and I think there's always a, a level like between us three sisters I mean yeah one time we did try like we don't really train yeah. together anymore because it didn't really work out <laughs> we, we can't run on treadmills <laughs> next to one another because we'll like look over at the speed and like just slyly bump it up and yeah. then the other one and at one point um Alex Kirk she um she was like, oh, we're going to just do 1K. It was, it was just a silly challenge, wasn't it? Cause it was 1K yeah, as fast yeah. as you could on a treadmill. And by the end of it, she was like trying to catch me or Rosie because <laughs> she thought one of us was going to fly off the treadmill and we're both banging it to make it go faster. Yeah, I think, Lucy, I think Lucy won by 0.1 seconds. By a hair. <laughs> and probably because I only thought to bump it up a bit sooner. Um, but yeah, no, there's like me, Molly, Lucy, uh, one time we did try and go for a run as well in, in when we were on holiday and, and it didn't, I think it ended up in tears. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think now we're just a lot more, like we use it to our advantage more mm. than anything. So like when I, I still, like see you on court or like we meet each other mm. in, a, in a grand final, um, uh, I think it's more like, I, I just feel it's like a privilege to be there. Like not only am I here on this court, like in this awesome experience, but I'm, I'm in front of like 30,000 people. I'm here with my sister, like mm. that's just awesome. So yeah, I think we have like event. We've kind of narrowed and focused it down to something that helps us. And yeah, us yeah, exactly. rather than yeah. something that kind of makes us cry. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's I great suppose, support, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and I suppose it, it's never ever in a negative way. So I suppose the competition is always just to spur each other on. But if you were to be playing, I, I sometimes can't even watch Lucy play because I'm I want her to do so well, and I'm so worried <laughs> about her making a mistake. I'm like I can't watch. So I think it's like it it spurs on positive things yeah. as well as as well as it being slightly irritating on holiday when you're trying to go on a on a family nice run <laughs> and Rosie when when you were injured I mean you you turned to triathlon and mm. uh, I'm just wondering what made you choose triathlon and uh, how can you see the future of, of triathlon as far as you're concerned yeah so um for me I, I'd had um a challenging year um just generally at university I was trying to balance a lot and I just needed a bit of a, a bit of perspective and some time away from netball um and a lot of players do it just take a year out and and just sort of refocus and get fitter and, and build um and I just to be quite honest wanted to pick something that was completely different um I've always quite enjoyed swimming running um and I picked up a bit of cycling when I was on holiday and I, I just I just seemed to enjoy it so um, my uncle also um, inspired me to give a triathlon a go and um, I did one and I just absolutely loved it. I loved the atmosphere and I, I did the actual, the one in Round Hay in Leeds um, and I just almost threw myself into it. I was on a really fourth hand bike. It was awful. <laughs> um, I didn't even know obviously where to start, but I sort of threw myself into it. Um, I was wearing a wetsuit that filled up with water and it was, wasn't the best experience of my life, but I really enjoyed it. And then um, yeah, so I, I just thought I'd focus on that for a year and, and just um, almost just give myself a bit of space and, and I always wanted, knew I wanted to keep training and keep fit and it was just a good way to, good way to do that. Um, mm. um, I ended up um, really, this is completely through luck, qualifying for the age group um, Great British Championships in Spain and that was um, just this March that's gone. So I was training quite hard for that and, and um yeah, always uh, was training down at Leeds Carnegie as well on the track and, and doing um, lots of uh, lots of fitness related sessions and not always the nicest training to do. But um, yeah, I just I, I quite enjoy keeping health and fit and healthy and, and fit. So I think that was um, yeah, it, it was an amazing experience. But I think it's it's probably uh, I think you'll go back to yeah. It. I think it'll be something that I go back to in the future and. Um, I've definitely got my um, eyes set on netball for now anyway. That's good. Good so stuff. I was going to say, I was going to say, focusing back on the, when you first started school and you were trying out all those different sports, it just shows that you were, you were able to do, lot, turn your hand to lots of different things. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. And I think GSAR definitely gave me that, that grounding that I was entered into swimming galas. I was playing tennis for the school and like just doing so many different 
things and going down different avenues it definitely helps with um almost having those transferable skills yeah and lucy how have you found playing in the super league um yeah so i've played in super league for five years now so um i feel like i'm getting you know when you used to be the real young gun and now that all these other young guns coming through and i'm like hang on <laughs> oh, that's me <laughs> yeah um but i think it's been it's been i've really enjoyed the journey and it's been a really big learning curve for me especially transitioning into that kind of higher age group where you're perfectly people within, within their rights to bully you off the court and you're going to have to grow a bit of kind of bottle and get in the gym and, and start lifting some weights and you can't just rely on that kind of like natural flair or ability you really have to put in the groundwork um, and then it's just been brilliant that the netball like I say the netball's kind of grown whilst I've been in the Super League so every year my contracts are being worth more and I feel like my voice is being heard more as a player um, so it's been an amazing journey and I think it's such an exciting kind of atmosphere to be in right now um, and just seeing all the all the kind of young girls getting involved and I think we were looking at it earlier I think it was like after the Commonwealth gold that England won 130,000 new yeah. sign-ups to netball mm. back to netball and things happened um, across the UK which is just insane so it's just so awesome to be a part of it really yeah and, and I did say at the start, probably just before we, we started uh, recording, that um, I wouldn't mention the, the grand final uh, whilst <laughs> against Loughborough. But I was just wondering, <laughs> twice, <laughs> but I was just wondering, uh, what were you thinking? I mean, I know you would be in, in the zone of, of playing the game, but what, would you be, what were you thinking about your family whilst they were, they were watching the both of you on opposite teams? I think they were in Italy. Yeah, I do think they're watching it. <laughs> <laughs> I think they just thought, we'll leave them to it. And then yeah. they just went. Um, but yeah, no, it was, I think it was just, I think it's great. And you're so mm. in that environment, you're in the changing room and everyone has their different things. Like, I have no idea what Loughborough did prior to the finals, but the Wasps thing was kind of so specific to us. And it's that they're your family at that point in time. So as mm. much as like, I'm willing Rosie to like smash it and, and, mm. and do really well, I'm kind of, in that zone of that's my family and then I think you're at the same yeah list, yeah exactly like, you you're almost like you're committed to that to that that moment that point yeah. in time but yeah. I think there was one moment when we were playing um we went on against each other yeah in fast five and, and I tapped a thigh yeah yeah I think <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. and, uh, and I almost like that was that was a moment but I almost forgot that I was playing against my sister I have to say I, yeah it, it, you, just, you just sort of playing just that a player. And, yeah so and would you say that the, these moments you're talking about now are your proudest or best moments? Are they, you know, or was it something when you were younger or, you know, what would you say? Uh, well, I have to say, coming down moment? to breakfast in my gold medal was quite a good moment. No. <laughs> <laughs> we did win fast five though, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have um, <laughs> I also have a gold medal. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. What, what was the question again? Sorry, it was the What's your proudest or best moment? Yeah, I think that um, I have to say winning nationals um, yeah. twice um, <laughs> was um, they're both really really special moments, both for different reasons. Um, I think yeah, winning netball nationals has to be up there with one of my best sporting memories I've ever had. Winning netball nationals for the first time. Yeah, that's um, special. Yeah, yeah, it was also a really <laughs> special moment for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but no, that was, yeah, I think that was the first time I genuinely thought like, this is just awesome. I want to do this forever. Mm -hmm. um, and, a bit, and it's quite difficult as an athlete. You only have a few of those moments. In a, in a career that spans 10 years, you could have three of those moments. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I just feel lucky that I've had uh, several and um, they've all just given me more and more motivation to keep going and keep mm. achieving more. And I think when it gets to the point that that, that those kinds of moments don't push me on to keep doing more, I think then it's probably time to step back. But currently I just, I feel like I'm just, you know, it's a bit of an addiction. You just want to mm. have the next one and the next one. So hopefully I've got a few more grand finals in the bag. <laughs> I'm sure you have. <laughs> and a few more gold medals each. 
Yeah. <laughs> I think so my can... parents say it has to be each. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and we think you should share one of those gold medals, even though you do, Rosie, have a gold medal for the fast five as well. So, yes. <laughs> exactly. Plenty more years to come. So, yeah. we've come to the time whereby you've got your 10 rapid fire questions. And I suppose if Rosie answers first and then Lucy, so, uh, and you, the, the only rule is you're really only allowed one, one word answers unless. Obviously, you need to answer with two words, but it's a quick no. fire. Is that okay? You ready? Yeah, yeah that's fine. Yeah. Okay, so first one is sporting hero. Lindsay Vaughn. Sorry, you were supposed to go first. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you understand how she's quite competitive. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd say Jess Furness. <laughs> okay, that's fine. And number two, early bird or night owl? Night owl. Night owl. Okay, question three. Winter fun or summer sun? Summer sun. Winter. Oh. Toughest opponent. Ooh. Lucy. Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> Good answers. Okay, Lucy, if not netball, what? Climbing. Okay. Mm. Rosie, if not, would you choose netball or triathlon? Netball. Pizza or burger? Pizza. Burger. <laughs> Favourite pop group? Arctic Monkeys. Okay. Oasis. <laughs> I don't actually really like Oasis, but they think it comes to my head. <laughs> I don't okay. like Okay, describe yourself in one word. Competitive. Oh, God. Um, happy. <laughs> happy and competitive, good. And describe each other in one word. Competitive. <laughs> Competitive. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Girls, thank you so oh much God. for joining us today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was a big test for you, wasn't it? A big <laughs> test. <laughs> well, listen, so, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, you're so happy. You're so funny. And uh, it's an absolute pleasure to speak to you. And I know we haven't spoken for a year or so. So it, that's really nice to, to be in contact with you again. And thank you to uh, Kate as well for asking the questions as well. And uh, listen, we wish you all the best in the future. We so hope everything goes really well. And you must keep in touch with us and keep telling us that you, you are sharing these gold medals at every other grand final. And, yeah. um, <laughs> and we'll keep watching you on television and wishing you all the best. Thanks, girls. Thanks, uh, thanks, thanks, thank thanks GSL, for giving us that, all these opportunities because it has come from that. So that's yeah. awesome. Oh, you're oh, welcome. You're welcome. It's all the girls' staff are amazing and they'd say that you're amazing too. So well done, everybody. Oh, cool. thanks very much. Take Thank you very much. much. Take care.